Today we will be looking at my UX portfolio that I made for my UX Google course. Before we get into my portfolio, I will be talking about some tips and finally show you my portfolio. So tip one, explain your work. If you have done the research, show it. I understand that the final product is visually appealing and all of the text and research and explanation isn't appealing in comparison. However, it shows the way that you think. It shows your process, which is so important within UX. Tip number two, presentation. So let's assume that you have finished your portfolio piece and you are ready to share it with the world via the portfolio. But before you do that, it is so important to create a visually appealing presentation. Throughout the stages, use images that fit within the brand. Tip three. So when presenting your work, it is so important to keep on brand. So what I like to use is the same fonts, which are my brand fonts throughout my presentation. However, a personal choice of mine was to use the brand colors of the brand that I designed for. E.g. if there is a brand color that is orange, I will use orange throughout my work, for example, for subtitles to make it pop and fit within that brand. So this allows your presentation to be on brand within your personal brand as well as fit into the brand you are designing for. Tip four, use mockups. So this is the example of mockups I used within my projects. One thing that doesn't exactly translate is the word mockups within UX and branding. Within UX, it is static wireframes that includes visual UI. However, in branding and graphic design, it means moving this static design onto a placeholder, such as a laptop containing one of the static wireframes. This really allows the viewer to see the work in action, e.g. on a desktop, on a laptop, on a tablet or a phone. So now that you have my four tips to creating a portfolio, it is time to design it. I would first recommend to design the presentation in Figma or Adobe XD and have the presentation on point. Now that you have everything, the next step would be to transfer it to an online portfolio. So I would personally recommend Webflow. That's what I use. And unlike other website designers, you can truly customize it and not work on a template, which is so important when you want the UX of the website to be good. And the little details in a website really matter, especially in your UX and UI portfolio. So let's have a look at my website layout. First of all, my website allows for two ways to get to my work. First, via the nav bar. Second, by clicking either the image taking you directly to that portfolio piece or clicking view all work. When viewing all work, there is two sections for branding and UX UI. As I do offer both of these services and apply for jobs for both of these. So it makes it easier for the person to filter by these options. When clicking into the UX UI section, I present my work in a grid of three, allowing the viewer to easily see all of my work without scrolling. And even if I had six portfolio pieces, there still isn't a lot to scroll through, unlike the other layouts like this single image layout. Right, so let's go into my portfolio. As you can see, the first thing that you see is the context to the case study. So we have the image on the right and on the left, we have the logo and the case study description, as well as what I used. In this case, it was Adobe XD. When you scroll down, a bar pops up on the left, allowing the viewer to avoid scrolling through sections if they are looking for something specific. E.g. this person wants to see the UI design. They can just click here and it will scroll them through to this section so they don't have to manually scroll. My first portfolio piece. So this is the first time that I worked with Figma and UX UI and this is what I created. Um, so we have the project overview and this is what I'm talking about by using images to try and make the presentation more interesting. So we have some flowers here, some flowers here next to the problem statement, next to the goals and so on. So I'm really trying to keep within the brand. So here we have this pinky color 
but this font is my brand font. And then we have the competition analysis, the persona, the user journey map, and I have customized everything. Um, so the Google UX course gives you templates, which I have then changed. This is something that I have added on and I haven't, there is a section about the information architecture, but I wanted to really um, give more of a, a light onto it because I know that the template of the portfolio piece doesn't have a information architecture. And then we have the user flow as well here usability study and then the changes that I made and as you can see here's the colors here's the fonts and as I said I'm using my brand font but I'm using the colors from this brand then we have the logo it's very simple um, I didn't really spend much time at all with this super simple as I really wanted to focus on the UX UI And then we have the wireframes. And if you want to, you can check out the uh, low fidelity. And then we have the UI design. So as you can see right here, we have the registration process. Then we have the questionnaire, homepage, profile, blog, flowers, the order process. And again, you can check it out right here so um totally forgot to say that th this is obviously a um a flower uh business and it's focusing on um being a subscription so it allows people to be at peace knowing that they will not forget the special occasions and they will never not have fresh flowers in their home um so that was the main purpose of this then my second portfolio piece was Perfect Box, and this is a responsive website. So I have designed it on um, desktop as well as mobile. And this Perfect Box is all about um, a subscription for cat food. So again, we have the same thing where we have the project overview. I've, I have like a very strong theme going around my um, UX portfolio. So it's the same sort of layout. We have text over here, a picture over here. Again, same thing. And again, it's so important to have these pictures because it makes it more interesting. Because like I said before in my tip section, that it would be just text. So we want to make this as appealing as possible. Even things like this, like the competition analysis, we have the logo, we have the ratings, uh, the good things, the bad things, just makes it more appealing to the eye. And then again, we have the same thing. Um, feel free to go into my portfolio and like really check out what I'm writing about and really spend the time to read about the things I'm saying if you want to, of course. Um, again, we have the wireframes here and you can check that out in here. And then we have the UI design. So we have the home page, we have the product, the about us section, create a profile, the checkout, the user profile, and then you can try it out on desktop and mobile. So I'm just going to give you a quick view of how that would look like. So let's check out the high fidelity mobile section. As you can see, you can scroll through this. This is like a normal website. Um, there's, and the one thing that I've learned whilst I was creating this that is that this is not supposed to be a full website. This is more of like a guide. So not every single thing will be interactive. So for example, you can't click on number two cats, but you can only click on number one. And this is because I would have to create then every single interaction. And then you can type in max. You can't click on girl, it's a boy, um, how old and continue. So you can see here this blue box showing you how that would work. And you don't need to create it for this one because we already know how this would specifically work. And yeah, 
and then the same thing happens all over here. Um, so yeah, uh, you can check that out in your free time if you want to. So let's check out the final portfolio piece and this is created for social good. So I wanted to focus on this um, brand I called Kids Chef Learn How to Cook and it's designed to help kids learn how to cook healthy food um, at a budget. And again, we have this same sort of layout. Um, everything is exactly the same, just obviously focused onto this brand. As you can see, I'm using the brand colors of this brand, but I'm using my brand font. Uh, we have the pictures, everything is there accordingly. Um, one thing that I really liked uh, throughout my design process is like making the colors here more interesting and fit with the brand. So for the first one, I had flowers. Uh, for the second one I had little kitten faces and then finally we have the spoon and the fork. Um, so yeah, let's get on to the UI. Um, so this is where you start off and then we have the recipe section right here. And one thing that I wanted to focus on this is instead of making this a... Um, a desktop app I wanted to make a tablet app um, I think that the actual Google UX course does prompt you to create a app both for desktop and mobile whereas I know that my target audience being kids they are more likely to use tablets than desktops therefore I created a desktop app and presented that so that is why I have a tablet and a phone. Um, so yeah, this is what happens when you select. Then you have this fridge option, which shows like what food do you have in the fridge? And then you can find the recipes, including this. So like if you have eggs and ham and salt, you can create something from that. Or if you have cheese and ham, then that will send you a different recipe accordingly. Um, then you can rate um, the meal and see if you've enjoyed it and for it to go into your favorites. So you always have that there when you don't know what to cook and you already rated it and you already know that it's in your favorites. Then you have your profile so you can uh, have your preferences, you can see your past meals and then again favorite meals. And yeah, you can again check it out um, so like I said again, we have the same thing happening where it's specific things that you can click on. So at the start I couldn't click this, I have to go in this specific order. Um, so yeah, this is my portfolio. I hope that you have um, enjoyed it and feel free again to check it out in your own time. Um, so yeah. So this is the end of this video. If you have enjoyed it, please give it a like, subscribe and comment and I will see you guys next time. Bye.